It restricts state recognition of intimate family legally recognized unions to a marriage of one man and one woman. Therefore, it prohibits polygamy, bigamy, it prohibits uh, uh, same-sex marriage, it prohibits anything that's not one man and one woman. And you'll, dis you'll realize after a while that everyone in this room would put some limit on who can marry whom. Now, you may not come into it thinking that, but if you, if you, if you drill down deep, uh, certainly no one here would say that two three-year-olds could marry. If you take a look at your bill, you'll see, or at the, 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 the law, you'll see that actually what the law does that we passed has two parts to the constitutional amendment. A first sentence which defines the marriage or as the only recognized uh, entity, and a second which seeks to undo some of the concern about business relationships. Well, unfortunately, if you look at the last section of the bill, the second sentence is omitted from what's going on the ballot. The only thing going on the ballot is the first sentence. The public doesn't even get to vote, hear, or debate the second sentence. It's unnecessary. It's not that it has no meaning. It would be the, it's the way it would have been interpreted anyway. I'm not telepathic enough to know how the courts are going to interpret But you don't sentence. object to the second sentence. I don't object to the second sentence. I object to the whole amendment. But, <laughs> but, but in the end, we don't do any favors to the public. It's one thing to shorthand statement a constitutional amendment, but keep essentially the same text in there in order to fit on a ballot initiative. It's another thing to take out a second sentence which was deliberately put in as a political compromise to get the votes to put the thing on the ballot to begin with. What will you say to the loving threesome who comes before us next year and says, why can't we get married? But the state ought not be in the business generally outside of compelling health reasons of regulating marriage. But assuming that it can, there is a whole gulf difference between the issues of polygamy and bigamy and the issue of incest, adult incest relationships and the issue of whether two couple, a couple, two people have the right to have a full lifetime of legal recognition of their loving relationship. Equal protection, I, I believe that uh, what I quoted either came from Aristotle or Plato. It's not, it's not something we just thought of last month, but that is different things can be treated differently if the uh, things or people are in a very different relationship. That's Did, an obvious equal protection law. People ought to be treated the same. People are not things. <laughs> Secondly, there is no compelling governmental interest involved in this. This is not uh, the circumstance that you suggested with your polygamy example. And finally, we engage here in an incredible slippery slope. So if gay folks aren't allowed don't have the rough fundamental right to do the one thing as human beings that we all want to do, which is to decide who we want to live with, who we want to marry, who we want to have a relationship with. And explain to me, maybe you should tell the folks, did that mean that they also don't have the right to public office? That's a lesser constitutional right to run for public office than it is to decide who you're going to spend your day with. Or perhaps they don't have a right to go to a public school at in-state tuition. Where's the slope stop, Representative Stam? How many people are, do we have to affect? How many rights have to be affected if the most traumatic, most important right in our lives is going to be controlled with the government? What stops the government from controlling and outcasting these same people as to every other right in life? And that is the slope you are starting us on, and it is the one that the people of North Carolina are going to have to stop. Let me just